A couple of weeks ago, on October 25th, Chamberlain Group, makers of popular garage door systems like MyQ, made an announcement that they were cutting off access to their API, rendering a not insignificant number of users of their hardware unable to use it like they want to, and effectively nuking access to use and control your MyQ garage doors from anywhere other than the MyQ app and a few very select others. This is a huge deal as it means that you can no longer use platforms like Home Assistant, Homebridge, OpenHab and others to control your MyQ garage doors. The reason Chamberlain gave for them cutting off access to the API was weirdly enough for performance and reliability reasons, though I guess it's a slight improvement over the security reasons Philips Hue recently gave during their own self-inflicted PR nightmare. The original announcement actually went relatively unnoticed for about 10 days until it was picked up in a blog post from Home Assistant where they talked about how they tried to get in touch with MyQ several times to become an authorised partner but received no response, implying that MyQ had already decided that they just didn't want to work with Home Assistant and were unwilling to discuss it, meaning Home Assistant has no choice but to remove the MyQ integration in the next release since it's effectively blocked from working and can never work again without the access it needs. Since the Home Assistant blog post, pretty much all last week my timeline was just filled with a lot of people angry at Chamberlain, and rightly so. We also saw this get picked up by pretty much every other t major tech publication out there, including Ars Technica, The Verge, 9to5Mac, Tech Hive, Forbes and a bunch of others all just dunking on Chamberlain for this announcement. And I must admit, as someone who has got no personal stake in this, I got a lot of satisfaction just seeing the entire internet band together to just collectively poop all over Chamberlain. And I personally enjoyed this take from Internet of Shit, who came back to Twitter just to say this. Then a couple of days after the blog post, Chamberlain issued an update to their original announcement, which clarified why they were removing it, stating the following. Unauthorized app integrations stemming from only 0.2% of MyQ users previously accounted for more than half of the traffic to and from the MyQ system, and at times constituted a substantial DDoS event that consumed high quantities of resources. Our approved smart home integrations also remain in place. While MyQ Homebridge was discontinued in 2022, the product is still supported and our if this then that integration continues to be an option for MyQ users. This update does raise a number of questions. Firstly, there is no way to know if the numbers they are giving are actually real, but the 0.2% of users does seem quite low, which would be 20,000 users of the 10 million users they say they have. But even if that is accurate, that is 20,000 people you just directly impacted from this decision, 20,000 people who can now no longer use the hardware they bought and paid for the way they want to. Chamberlain referring to these 20,000 people as just a small percentage of users is pretty egregious, effectively saying that there isn't enough of you to matter to them. Now, I'm no developer by any stretch, but I do have a lot of infrastructure experience and I feel like if 20,000 users were able to cause major performance issues to a platform built to withstand 10 million users, then something has went wrong along the chain somewhere. But do you know how they could have completely avoided this in the first place? That's right, by implementing a local API on their device and allowing these users to talk directly to their hardware over their local network. It's much faster for the end user and much less traffic on your servers. What's not to like? I'm sure if they were to ever respond, they would give some security reason, but really it's a win-win for everyone. Finally, their last point about their approved integrations remaining in place and to use if this then that is quite frankly hilarious. Their approved list of integrations is comically small and features none of the major smart home players. And if this then that is the same company that just earlier this year restricted their free tier even further than before, and on the same day as the MyQ announcement, announced that their platform would no longer work with Amazon. If this and that is not a company I would want to point my users to if I wanted to try and claw back some trust. MyQ has a history of doing these types of things to their loyal customers, unfortunately. 
as users of the MyQ integration on Home Assistant will be all too familiar with. With it probably being the most troublesome integration there has been, it certainly is the one that I used to get the most comments on videos about it not working, with them constantly changing things in the back end to break it, which Home Assistant would then patch and fix, which they would then change again. The maintainer of the MyQ integration actually described it as playing a game of cat and mouse with MyQ, which seems quite fitting. They also discontinued their home bridge last year too, which allowed HomeKit users to integrate with MyQ, though to their credit, they do still support users who previously bought one. They also completely removed their integration with Google Home back in June of this year, effectively rug pulling another segment of their customer base, and it means that MyQ doesn't directly work with Google Home, Amazon, HomeKit, SmartThings, Home Assistant, or any other third-party platforms. Now, I'm not a user of MyQ or Chamberlain products, thankfully, but even as an outsider, it's pretty clear to see what is happening. They are trying to force all of their users into using the MyQ app, where they can much better control the um, experience, shall we say. See, when I started looking into some of these complaints, there was one thing that I kept seeing time and time again of users complaining about when it comes to the MyQ app. Ads. Ads which coincidentally seem to have started pretty much exactly one year ago, right around the time that they started this systematic disassembly of their integrations, beginning with HomeKit. See, using third-party apps like Google Home or HomeKit or Home Assistant wouldn't allow them to display ads for their products and services. Ads which appear as soon as you open the MyQ app. It's all kind of making sense now. However, as someone said to me recently, never waste a good crisis. And this does give lessons that I think we can all learn from, regardless of if we're affected by this situation or not. The most obvious one being, if you buy a device that is attached or dependent on the cloud, that device is not yours. You are entirely at the mercy of the company at the end of that cloud, allowing you to continue to use it. They could at any time change the way the device works, which features you have access to and which ones they want to remove, and you have no choice but to just lie there and take it. That's not to mention what happens if that company suddenly disappears tomorrow, turning their cloud off and leaving you with a paperweight. So please, if you want to actually own the devices you buy, buy locally controlled devices. They might cost a little bit extra, but often they don't and will last you so much longer in the long run and pay for themselves many times over. The unfortunate situation with Chamberlain is that they reportedly own about 70% of the US market, so much of the market that this effectively allows them to dictate the terms. They know they have no real competition and so they control the experience. However, there are some great local solutions. The one that a lot of places have been referencing and that I want to mention first too, because I think it's so cool to see other community members offering their own devices, is a device called Ragdo from Paul Wayland. It's essentially a $30 board that hooks up directly to your door opener and uses ESP Home or MQTT to speak directly to Home Assistant or other platforms and provide fast local control to your garage door. There is a little bit of a wait time at the moment as he has been inundated with new orders, as you can imagine, thanks to Chamberlain, but really cool device and pumped for Paul, would love to potentially carry his boards in the future too. There's also some other devices like ones from Miros, which can work with HomeKit, meaning that will also be locally controlled, or there is iSmartGate openers too, which allegedly work entirely locally, though I haven't tried them myself. That's it, that's the video today. Not a good one to have to make, but one that I do feel very strongly about fighting back against. And even if you aren't a user of MyQ and you've just been sitting back watching this whole thing unfold like me, it's still a really strong reminder that local control is king and local control is the only way to guarantee that devices you buy today will still be yours in years to come. And feel really bad for everyone who has invested in Chamberlain hardware. Sucks to have been rug pulled like this, but hopefully we can vote with our wallets and boycott them going forward. We'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Maybe you are a MyQ user that has been affected by this. Let us know which alternative solutions you've been looking at and which ones are good. 
down in the comments and help each other out. Drop this video a like whilst you're down there, get subscribed, and I will see you in the next video, hopefully a more positive one. And I did just want to sign out with this comment from my man Tony, who sums up things pretty well. Chamberlain.